Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk to you about directories and files. This comes from our CompTIA a requirements on the essentials exam in section 303, where we need to explain the process and steps to install and configure the Windows operating system. And we need to know about file systems. We need to know about directory structures. And we need to know about the files themselves. So this is really going to get into a lot of details about understanding when we put a file on a hard drive of an operating system, what's really happening there. We're going to see all of that in this module. Before you can save a file onto your computer, before the operating system can read and write files, you need a file system. So let's start with what a file system happens to be. When we do a format command, when we initialize a hard drive for the very first time, it has to be formatted with a very specific file system. We are essentially creating a foundation that we're going to put everything on. The entire computer and every file on there is going to use this file system. So this becomes pretty important to us. Now, whenever you have an operating system, it's expecting this data to be written in a particular format on the hard drive that is this file system. And it has to be a file system that the operating system recognizes. Not all operating systems will recognize all file systems. You want to be sure if you're on a system that is sharing certain data across drives that you are using a file system that all of the different operating systems know how to read for information from at a minimum and hopefully also write information to. Very, very common formats is the FAT format, the File Allocation Table format, and FAT32. These are very open formats. They've been around a long time. And many operating systems can both read and write data to a FAT32 file system. So there are some operating systems that can read and sometimes write information to other file system types. NTFS, for instance, is the NT file system that has been made very popular in Windows. Not all other operating systems can read that file system. Some operating systems can read that file system, but not write to it. So if you're in this situation where there are multiple operating systems in use, make sure you check what the operating systems you're using and see what file systems are available so that when you initialize or you install an operating system for the first time, you've chosen the correct file system to use. Why would you have so many file systems to begin with? Why don't you just choose one and we'll all decide on the same file system? Well, we can't make things that easy in our particular industry. And the reality is that some of these file systems started off many, many years ago to perform some very, very basic functions. And as we have evolved and our computers have evolved and the way we use them has evolved, we've needed additional capabilities. And so we've created new file systems with those additional capabilities. If we look way back into the 1980s, we can see that one of the original PC-based file systems was one called the File Allocation Table, or FAT. And there has been an update to that in Windows 2000 and newer. There's something called FAT32. And when we talk about FAT, if you ever hear anybody talking about a file allocation table file system, and they just call it FAT, they're probably these days referring to FAT32. It's pretty much everywhere these days. The FAT32 allows you to have large volume sizes. The file allocation table, the original one, wasn't really thinking that we'd ever have hard drives this big. It was never designed for those sizes. So you can now have files in a FAT32 hard drive that have a file size of 4 gigabytes. You may notice that if you're using one of the newer video cameras, an audio recorder, and it gets to 4 gigabytes, it may stop working or it may close that file and open a new one. And that's because the file system that's probably running in that video camera, like the one I'm using right now, is FAT32. So I know that if I was to record on this for a long period of time, it will continue to record, but it will close off the file at 4 gig and start a new file for me. And that's why it's because it's FAT32. The modern file system in Windows is something called NTFS. That stands for NT File System. And it's on really any modern version of Windows that you will find from Windows NT all the way up to Windows 7. NT File System is one that really brought quite a number of improvements right to the operating system and the way that we store files on the hard drive. Uh, some really good examples of that are things like file compression. In NTFS, I can tell the operating system, anything I put into this directory, just compress it automatically. And although 
although it takes a little bit more overhead to store that file and retrieve that file, you're using a lot more less disk space. You're crunching that file down and compressing it while it's stored on your hard drive. It's just built into the file system. You don't have to do anything manually. You don't have to remember every time you save the file that it's compressed. It does it for you. Encryption is another good example of that. Let's take a file and encrypt it and store it on our hard drive. And whenever we try to retrieve it, we're going to need the proper credentials to be able to decrypt the file that's there. There's other things as well, like symbolic links and large file support, and some security, and some recoverability options and capabilities where we can have multiple hard drives work together together. There's a lot of different versions of NTFS through the years. But if you're using an operating system from Microsoft that's any one of these Windows operating systems and you really want to make the most of the capabilities of that OS, you want to consider using NTFS. Now that we're ready to store files on our hard drive, we've created a file system that we like. We need to be able to organize things. You just can't take every file you have and throw it onto a hard drive, and everything's just out in the middle of nowhere. You need, just like you have in your office, separate it out and organize it into folders. This directory structure functionality that we have within Windows allows us to do that. You can see that you have a hard drive, and underneath that hard drive, you have these subdirectories. In Windows, we call those folders. And you can see where we have these folders, and just like you would have things that you would put into a physical folder, you could store files in physical folders here. So this allows us to really take a lot of information that would have been all over the place and logically lay it out. Have a folder for your music. Have a folder for your pictures. And of course, I can have a folder within a folder within a folder, which isn't necessarily something you do in the real world. But with Windows, it makes it very easy to do that. Whenever we start working in these folders and, and putting information in there, uh, you'll notice there are a number of folders on your computer that are just there automatically that you didn't put there. Things like program files, things like Windows. Some of these are system folders. Some are application folders folders. Do not delete things that you don't know what they are, because you will create problems for yourself. If you went in and said, oh, I didn't put that Windows folder there. Let's remove that folder. You would be deleting the operating system from your hard drive. And those types of problems happen all the time. You'll get a phone call for support where somebody's gone to the root directory of their hard drive, and they just deleted things, not realizing that the information stored in some of those important folders was really, really important. When you start looking at your hard drive, there are a number of things that you're going to see all the time. One uh, is the, the name of the hard drive, or the way that we designate what volume that we would like to access on your computer. So you'll see things like a drive letter, and it's followed by a colon. So things like C colon, D colon, H colon are specifying a volume that's somewhere. That volume may be a hard drive on your computer. It may be a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM. It may be a volume that's somewhere across the network. What this uh, designation allows our operating system to do is access that particular device wherever it happens to be. And it knows that every time I type a C colon, I must be referring at least to that volume that is part of my hard drive. And anything that comes after that C colon is specifying a folder that's within that particular volume. So anytime you see a drive letter and a colon, it's referring to that volume wherever it might be. There are also slashes that are very important. And on your keyboard, if you'd look, there is a forward slash and there was a backslash. The forward slash is at the bottom, bottom right. It's usually next to your question mark. It's different depending on if you're on an international keyboard or not. There's also a backslash, which is generally just above your inner key. These are very different things. They look very similar. And sometimes it's confusing to know exactly when to use them. So I thought we'd go through that. A backslash, just above your inner key generally, is used to designate directories and network shares. So in Windows, whenever you're specifying a directory, your directories are always separated with a backslash. It's a little different if you come from a Linux environment where it's exactly the opposite. It's a forward slash, isn't it? Well, in Windows, it's a backslash. It's been that way since the DOS days. If you are using the forward slash, then it's anything but that in Windows. It's a slash that's in a, uh, a browser. We use the forward slash. If we're doing other things in our operating system that have nothing to do with directories and nothing to do with network shares, it's probably the forward slash that you're using.